Recently, BMW underwent a model lineup change, dividing the 1 Series into the 1 and 2 Series, and the 3 Series into the 3 and 4 Series. And what resulted from that was a few new models and a whole bunch of confusion, with a lot of people still not really sure what it is BMW is trying to do. If you're one of those people, it's quite simple really. The new 2 and 4 series cars are more about presence and dynamics. It has nothing to do with coupes versus sedans. It's just a matter of saying, look, my 4 series is more exciting than your 3 series. It took an email from BMW's product guy for me to understand it, but I get it now. Well, I did. And then they went and released this. The Grand Coupe is all 4 Series aggressive from the front, but as you get to the back you see the roof is a bit longer and it tapers off and softens out. And they did that so they could make way for the rear doors, and at the same time shoot themselves in the foot. Unintentionally I'd imagine, but this 4 door coupe is nowhere near as dynamic or exciting, or any other 4 Series adjective, as the regular version. Never mind the argument about what a coupe actually is, the rear treatment of this car has really softened it to the point of blandness. The advantages are easier rear access and a bit more headroom in the back, plus a marginally bigger boot. But given that the one idea behind the 4 Series is to set it apart by making it more visually appealing, the Grand Coupe is a bit of a letdown. I am genuinely disappointed because I really like the idea of a four-door coupe. Mercedes-Benz are particularly good at designing them. Just look at their CLS and their CLA models. And the Audi A7 is still a cracker of a thing. But the 4 Series Grand Coupe just doesn't have that same standout quality. Which then raises the question, what does it have? It has a typically BMW interior. Even though the optional leather in its shade of shouty red is a bit unexpected, the layout and the spec are very familiar. BMW's upgraded iDrive system now features handwriting recognition, although for right-handed people in this country, that's more accurately described as finger scroll recognition. The convenience of the rear doors is added to by an automated tailgate, which is standard across the range. Adding the comfort access option not only gives you keyless operation of the car, but also allows you to open the boot just by swinging a leg in front of some embedded sensors. Nifty. I was talking about the confusion that BMW caused when they split their model lines earlier, and hopefully my little explanation cleared some of that up, but there still are some unanswered questions, like the fact that there is a 3 Series version of this car, which also has 4 doors and is also kind of coupe-ish, but that's called the Gran Turismo, so why did BMW give this car a different name, and why would you choose this car over that one? Let's say you're in the market for something inherently sporty, so you opt for a BMW. You have a decent budget, but you can't afford a 5 Series, so you go for the next best thing. But you want something a little different, but still practical, but still sporty, so you go for what? The 335i Gran Turismo with its 4 doors and slightly bigger boot? Or the 435i Gran Coupe with its 4 doors and fractionally lower weight? Not forgetting, of course, its higher price tag. BMW want 50,000 Rand extra for this car, although there's nothing you can point to physically or literally and go, ah, there's my 50,000 Rand's worth of extra value. I just don't get it. And maybe that's a 4 Series thing. If you don't buy into BMW's justification for splitting their ranks, and you don't see the value in driving a 4 Series, and like me, this 4 Series in particular, maybe it's a sign that you're destined to be a 3 Series customer. And despite BMW saying that the 4 Series is the more exciting of the two, you should be okay with it. Especially if you choose this engine. It doesn't matter what BMW it goes into, the 3 litre turbocharged with its 225 kilowatts and 400 newton meters is superb. It sounds good, it's responsive, it's smooth. It's one of the best engines made by a company that knows a thing or two about building good engines. This 435i's ride setup is a little on the hard side, no doubt thanks to the standard M Sport suspension, and it is a bit more understeery towards the limit than I was expecting. But overall, it's a great performer. The engine, 8 speed Steptronic gearbox, and suspension all just feel so together and respond instantaneously to any kind of enthusiasm, whether you choose to drive it in sport mode or not. 
There are things I don't get about this car, primarily why BMW wants to charge a premium for it over a 3 Series that does essentially the same thing. Then the rear styling for me has been watered down thanks to the addition of the rear doors, but thanks to a superb engine and a well-sorted ride setup, the 435i Grand Coupe is a great performer, even if it isn't the most convincing four-door coupe on the market. BMW's 3.0-litre turbo proved itself yet again, adding good power and instant responsiveness to a composed ride setup. The 435i Grand Coupe offers an involving drive and a top-class cabin, but it's not the best four-door coupe in its limited class, and you will pay a relatively large premium to own one.